Hey guys, it's Studio R12 Live with Lena and I'm so excited about today's project. I picked up this farmhouse style chair from Ikea and I'm gonna show you how to jazz it up with our Buffalo Tech stencil. Hey guys, thanks for staying tuned. I just want to let you know about the giveaways we have happening today. So if you've watched any of our lives before, if you're familiar with Studio R12, you know that we love to give things away. So I have three of our five pack brush sets here. And if you're liking, commenting, and sharing on this video, you're going to be entered to win one of these brush sets. And then at the end of our video, I'll be announcing what our grand prize winner for today will be getting. And even if you're watching on the recast, you can still be entered to win. So be sure you're liking, commenting, and sharing if you're on the recast as well. If you're here with us live, leave us like a little red heart so we know that you're live with us. I'm so excited. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. I wanna talk to you a little bit about this project kind of before we get into painting. Um, this is obviously a chair that we're painting today. I'm painting the seat of the chair. And we just picked up a two set of chairs from Ikea. So this is just some chairs we found that we liked the bones of. They've got really good rustic farmhouse bones and I thought this would be perfect to work on painting a seat. So I picked out our Buffalo Check stencil. You can shop this on our website, studior12.com, okay? Um, and Noelle is linking in the comments below. She's gonna be linking a page to our website that has all the tools and things I'm using today on there for you to purchase, okay? All right, now I went ahead and I did a couple things to this chair base before we got on video just so you didn't have to stay here all day with me. Um, the first thing I did was I sanded it with a rough grit sander and I'll show you the sander, it still has dust on it. So these Ikea chairs are gonna come with like a plasticky finish over top of their MDF. And so you kind of have to buff that down so that your paint and stuff has something to kind of stick to, right? And then I use this DecoArt multi-purpose sealer and our oval glaze brush. So I'll show you this one, this clean one here. And I just went ahead and sealed it. Really good, nice layer, and then I let that cure. And that's something, you know, you can do it with a blow dryer or you can just give it time, but it needs to kind of evaporate really good. So I hit it hard with the blow dryer and then we went to lunch and after we came back, I went ahead and painted one layer of this Buffalo check on here just because from doing that first one, I knew how long it took to build and I didn't think we wanted to sit and watch a lot of that. It was a little tough. Um, but now that I know what I'm doing, I'm ready to bring it to you guys. So excited about that. Okay, so for the first coat, I did use a foam roller. It's all messy here. I use this foam roller. And when you're using a roller, it's it's still similar to these dome brushes. You don't want it overloaded, you don't want it wet. So I was still running it off on my paper towel, okay? I was still doing that part of the process, just so I didn't get a ton of bleeding. Now there is a little bit just because it's, you know, it's a roller, it is pushing paint. You don't wanna press really hard into your roller, it'll, it'll make that happen a little bit as well. But now I'm gonna go over it with my foam brush, or my dome brush here, not my foam brush, my dome brush. My dome brush, which I will be giving away three packs of today if you're liking, commenting, and sharing. Also, if you just hopped on, be sure to let us know how the weather is where you are. Say hi, we love to hear from you guys. So be sure you reach out. All right, so I'm gonna talk to you a little about colors as well. I kind of wanted a green, gray, mushroom kind of tone for this project. So I took this kind of funky color I have in the drawer and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of cream here. I'm just gonna scoop up some of that and mix it in. Okay, so something. So if you have watched our videos before, be sure to 
give us some love so we know that you're a returning customer, returning watcher. Maybe you haven't even bought anything yet, but you've just watched lots of our videos because you like them. Let us know. If you're new, welcome. My name's Lena. I'm with Studio R12, <laughs> and I'm so excited to be here today. And just about every time we do a live, I'm so excited. It's my favorite day of the week is Tuesday. <laughs> I love doing I love doing these with you guys because you guys just are always so positive and you, you seem to have such a good time so if you enjoy these as well let us know in the comments that you enjoy the lives and I'm curious if you have recently purchased something from studio r12 or if you purchased from us before what was your favorite thing you have purchased because like a fan favorite stencil or product, if you're like, mm, yes, girl, those brushes changed my life, or I don't know, whatever, let us know. I'm always so interested to hear from you guys what you like, what's working for you. So I'm gonna stipple. I tried to swirl. I'm gonna probably swirl these big spaces, but it's moving around just a little bit on me. Ooh, my hair's in my face. I'm just gonna stip all this in. And I'm also wondering if you have ever stenciled furniture before. I, up until this project, I had never done a piece of furniture. I had always wanted to. I always see like really great ideas for stenciled furniture and stuff online, really jazz up, you know. And really make some really old stuff look pretty again kind of revive it I've seen that but I have never done it and when this opportunity and we were talking about things we wanted to what do we want to bring to lives guys you know we're having a planning session I was like can I paint furniture find me something find me furniture I want to paint furniture so it was a really good experience I'm so so glad that um the team here, they get so excited about everything together. And we could bring you this chair project. Again, I just picked up this two set from Ikea. They were only like $40, $49, something like that. Um, not a super expensive chair. But one with really good bones that you can really jazz up. So that's always exciting. I have reupholstered furniture. I have never stenciled it until this project. Again, if you're just hopping on, I'm gonna recap for you what we did previous to this. Um, the stenciling step here, which was I sanded down the plastic coating, okay, with a rough grit sander, like a 60 grit paper. And then I used a coat of multi-purpose sealer. I used the deco art, whatever you have works. The deco art is just this great one that we have on hand here at Studio R12. And then um, I use our oval glaze brush to apply that because it doesn't leave behind texture like a foam brush might. Or really, you know, you'd have to be really cautious if you were using a foam brush. Um, also, if you have watched our videos in the past, I did a Christmas cookies with Santa tin. What I learned when I was painting this plasticky chair was that it was really similar to painting on tin. Okay, it doesn't, the paint has to dry really good in between coats because it's not soaking in. It's got to evaporate. You had to, you know, coat it down first with the sealer. There was a lot to it that was very similar to that tin project. So if you saw the tin project, tell us that you saw it in the comments. We like knowing things like that. Be like, yeah, I saw your tin. Um, if you didn't, you can check it out on our YouTube channel. Um, we post all of our lives there after we film them. Um, we also post lots of great stuff on YouTube. So if you haven't checked us out there, be sure to. It's a fun little spot. Get lots of cool content. And you can meet lots of other people from the team. Um, there are lots of people who film stuff for our YouTube channel, so excited about that. Um, also, if you're hopping on just now, or if you haven't yet because you've just, you know, you've been too busy watching, 
Be sure you're liking, commenting, and sharing so that you can be entered to win one of our four prizes today. So I have three of the brush sets to give away. And then I have a grand prize. And just a, just a fun tidbit about this grand prize, it's probably one of my favorite stencils of the year. Um, when I saw this one, I was like, mm, I need that. How do I get it? <laughs> Can I paint it and put my name on it? And then maybe I'll just have to take it home because it says my name. No, <laughs> no. Um, but I, I was trying like so hard to come up with a product project to paint it. So you're going to want to win this one. It's a good one is what I'm saying. So be sure you're liking, commenting, and sharing so you can be entered to win it. All right, now see how that texture is like not as bad. You can see that. That was a quick peek. We'll do a better one here in a second. And I have not worked sequentially for some reason. <laughs> I've not worked across or anything like that. I've really just hopped around, which is strange. Normally, you should, I would probably do this in like a row, but I don't know, something. Got distracted talking to you today. I also have this bad habit of missing <laughs> the bottom of my board when I look down. So sometimes you really have to step back from, from your project. And even though I am stippling for most of this, I am still wiping my brush off, okay? Because you still want to have that dry brush. It is going to have some bleeding, A, because I'm throwing my brush harder than I really should. When you stipple, you don't want to throw your brush like I have been sometimes. I get distracted talking and forget what I'm doing. You want to still use a nice light hand so you're not flinging paint under your stencil. The way that I'm going to distress this and clean it up, I'm not actually super concerned about little bleeds. Uh, obviously, if it's a big bleed, there's an issue. But I know that I, I'm, I know that I'm wiping my brush down, and I'm not overloading it, so I shouldn't have anything too big. Okay. So, we are getting to a place. I've got a couple more little blocks I'm going to hit, and then I'm going to show you what's next. And I'm really excited about it. Kind of discovered it just, just through discovery. It's the best part about getting to paint just for fun. Is sometimes you just discover things that work when you're just kind of experimenting. Have you done anything like that? Have you just... I've been trying to fix a mistake or just make something work because it's, you know, not going in a direction you like and I accidentally discovered like a, a technique that works for you. Because that's what happened with this chair. Now, I'm not trying to say that I invented this technique. I am simply saying that I stumbled upon it when I was trying to solve my issues. Okay. So again, I found that this, this chair was a lot like painting the tin. Oh, and that's pretty. So that would be really pretty true, but it was not really pretty on the first one. I really struggled with it. Um, I just, I didn't use the foam roller. I was just stippling and I was just shooting paint under and I wasn't giving it good dry time. This one, I took a lot more time here and I prepped it before we even got on the live. Again, sanding off that finish, multi-purpose sealer under it, which I did do on that one as well. I knew those two steps. Um, and then I painted that first coat and I'd let the paint dry and, and get good and cured as well. But I had some big messes to clean up. So what ended up happening was I took my wet paper towel because this is my favorite way to fix mistakes. 
okay when I make a mistake in my painting I really love to just use water and a paper towel to fix it right one thing I know about this is I can't use my sander on it if I go with my sander all it's gonna do is peel up my paint and not in a pretty way right so I took this to clean up my my issues what I ended up finding was that it was creating some really pretty distressing. It was like magic. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. So I was really excited about it, which I still am. And I'm so glad I can share it with you guys. Now it is similar to sanding in the more pressure, the more paint you're gonna take off. So I'm not using my nail either. I'm just, just using my finger here, okay? And anywhere I have any kind of bleeding, I'm running it over that, kind of taking that away. This is good. I, I just love it. I love that I discovered something that worked. That was so exciting. It was like that aha breakthrough moment for me when I was working on this project. It was really good. Good fun. And it is running some of that paint, you know, smearing. I'm okay with that because it happened on that one, so it gives some tone. I also used a dirty paper towel, so it has my, you know, has paint on it. And I'm kind of, so giving it a wash at the same time as I'm distressing down my stencil, okay? You use your nail, like I accidentally just did, I didn't even mean to lean into it that much. It's gonna scratch. You just want to use your fingertips and the paper towels, okay? Go one right here. I'm going to step back from it and try to see where it needs a little more. I think this looks so good. I love it. Okay. It was so fun. Okay, now to finish it, what I did on that one was I just took my stencil, which of course I did this before I did my distressing, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys that technique and then hop off. I wanted today to be kind of quick for you. And then you move it down till it's lined back upright. Then of course you would tape it. And you just paint this line here, okay? That's how easy that is. Now, now that I'm done, this actually feels super good and dry. If you're enjoying this project, let us know. If you like the way this has turned out so far, please let us know in the comments if you would have done a different color or something like that. I mean, tell me that too. I love to hear from you guys. Also, if you're going ahead to comment, be sure you like and share because then you can be entered to win our giveaways. I'm giving away three of these five packs of brushes. And then I have a grand prize for you as well, which I'm going to get ready and tell you um, right after I seal this. Now, I've got this multi-purpose sealer here as well, again. And I have one of our oval glaze brushes. These are the bomb, thebomb.com that you can get on studior12.com. They are tapered in all the directions, this way, this way, all the ways you fan them out, if I can get it to fan, it will fan out level. Okay, so it's not gonna leave texture behind on your surfaces. Okay. So I'm loading it. And I'm gonna seal down 
this paint. The other thing you could do with a chair like this is they have that, um, that curved neck piece there. You could definitely get some of our pretty lettering stencils. Like, um, I know we have a, a blessed that would look really cute in like the right color on the neck of that chair. Or we have some pretty stuff that would look good like climbing up the legs of the chair. There's lots of really cool stuff that you could do to a chair like this. I just saw um, a, someone else had painted online, they had painted um, the seat of a chair and I thought, oh my gosh, I could do that. And I realized that I'm sealing it, well I forgot to do that, but it's okay, I will just paint right on top of the sealer. Everything I'm painting is be, has painted on top of sealer anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay. Make sure I got everything. Good, and then I just wanna use up all the sealer, cause why not? I think I'm running. I'm in love with it. And now I have a really pretty matching set of rustic farmhouse chairs. Um, also, I'm gonna clean up this corner. So I've just got a wet paper towel here and I'm running it along the lip of the chair just so that I don't have any stencil. I cleaned up most of it and then I kind of forgot. And because it's not sanded or anything there, it does come off of it really easy. It's totally perfect now, so. No big deal. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to announce our grand prize giveaway. Are you ready? Again, this is my favorite stencil that's come off the line this year. This is our Be Happy. So pretty, and it's so trendy just in all the ways. First of all, the bee trend, super fun. And it's got all of this pretty white space, is what they call it, right? Uh, love it. So you could leave it plain. It's good to put over top of like pattern stencils, like any of our plaids or our buffalo checks would look really fabulous with this. Or again, just that trend of the white space. Super great stencil. So if you wanna win this, say me in the comments and then like and share so you can be entered to win it, okay? All right, guys, Noelle should be um, announcing, I believe, the winners of our brush brush sets in the comments so i hope it was you and um thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time